Hey everybody, Chuck Barone. Thursday, March the 16th, 2023. Bailout Thursday, yay, First Republic. What a crazy world we're living in, guys. This market whipsawing around. One day it's tragedy, the next day we rally. I, it's just bananas, man. I, I guess it's a great time to be alive, you know. I don't have a tremendous amount of exposure to the markets right now. And uh, I'm glad because I would just be tripping on this every day. I guess you just kind of, if you have a lot of money in the market or a substantial part of your retirement or whatever, you got to kind of be looking at not even... I, you're either looking at it every minute, freaking out, or you're not looking at it at all, praying that it all works out, right? Um, but what a wild ride we're on, man. Anyway, as always, before we start the show, just want to thank everybody for your support, welcome you to the show, let you know how much we appreciate you guys. Markets today, well, kind of a weird day, man. You know, when the market started out negative, every big bank worries, of course. But here come all the rest of the banks to the to the rescue of their little little brothers, and uh, the big banks coming to the rescue of the regionals. Um, Credit Suisse, actually the central bank of Switzerland, reluctantly said they would provide liquidity if they needed it. So all of a sudden, in one day, the banking collapse, freak out, whatever is fixed. Hmm. I don't know if I believe that, but the stock market did because the market rallied like crazy. The Dow up 371 points, S&P rally 68, NASDAQ up 283. Yay, a great day for stocks. And truthfully, you know, with the way they're whipsawing around, uh, if it's up 300 one day and down 300 the next, it's not a bet, right? Bond market today yields up, prices down, 10-year rallying nine basis points. Well, I shouldn't say rallying. The rate rallied, but the price of the bond didn't. Uh, the 10-year up nine basis points, 3.58%. The two-year up 18 basis points, 4.16, back up over 4%. I mean, these these bond market, you know, the bond market is where usually, like, that would be where conservative money would go. Not a lot of volatility, not a lot of action, you know, uh, just a steady return. Now there's like a casino, man. 18 basis point moves, 50 basis point moves, 30, I mean, it's just uh, 10 basis points now is getting to be a normal day. It's crazy, man, just crazy. The dollar, well, down small today, really no news. 104.43 holding steady on the index. Uh, metals today mixed. Gold up $1.30, $1920.20. Silver down ten cents, twenty one dollars sixty eight. I'm still telling you guys, you're going to see two thousand dollar gold. You're going to see twenty five dollar silver. Just waiting for a reason to rally. I really believe there's money waiting to be thrown in, the, not thrown, but invested into these metals. I think metals are going to rally. I believe that. Oil today, you know, yesterday was such a crappy day for oil, down big. Today a small rally, up sixty eight cents per barrel. $68.29 for a barrel of Wex Texas Intermediate. You know, I just, the question I have for our friends in the oil business who made just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars last year off the backs of us, the consumer. The second prices went up, they were raising prices at the gas pump like crazy. Well, now prices are coming down, guys. What's the deal? When are the gas prices coming down? It's just the greed in this market, the manipulation, and the things they can get away with. Just, a, just amazing to me. Bitcoin today up 480 bucks. A decent day for Bitcoin, 24,947. Looks like there's going to be another charge at the 25,000 level. Bitcoin, man, surprising, holding up strong in the face of horrible market conditions, horrible government, Horrible friggin' news in cryptocurrencies nonstop, inflation and everything else. Bitcoin hanging in there, man. Yay, Bitcoin. News you guys need today, quite a bit going on, guys. Wow. So I'm going to kind of not try to go into too much depth about a lot of this stuff. The main thing today, though, we are all looking for jobs, jobs, jobs. This market still hot, man. Wow. It's just. 
I, mean, I haven't had to go look for a job for quite a long time. I don't know the quality of these jobs out there. You know, if you're losing a, do a job that pays $25 an hour and you're getting a job that pays 15, that isn't so great, right? But a lot of jobs, jobless claims falling again, man, down 20,000 from last month, 192,000. Analysts had expect they knew the number was coming down. They had expected, uh, you know, two, 205K. Um, wow, jobs are still going good. This puts you know, this is the number one thing on the Fed's list right now. They need to stop this hot jobs market. They really feel like the, the wage gains that this market is producing are, are you know, one of the main drivers of this inflation. Still 1.9 jobs, basically two jobs for every person looking for one out there. So job seekers can afford to be choosy, and that's driving wages higher. The Fed's going to do what it takes to get this out, to finish this. You know, I, I think that if we didn't have all this fun drama going on with banks, that half point, this jobs report would lock in that half point next week. And it still may. We'll see where things go with these banks because I don't really believe, anybody that believes that this is over is just in a delusional state of mind, okay? Um, not great banking and the economy now, the Fed is really going to have to set its target to bring this recession on because as much as they've been trying to, I mean, rates went from basically 0 0.1 to 4.6. Next week, if they raise a quarter, we'll go to 4.85%. That'd be basically, you know, four and three quarter points of rate increases, you know, in about a year. That is really moving pretty quick for these markets, not really having much of an effect on the economy for most people, right? Um, you know, if you're a guy that's working for Meta, you might have a different opinion. But uh, for the most part, regular us blue collar guys, us regular working folk, um, jobs there. The fun news of the day: Can we get Janet Yellen today up on Capitol Hill getting beat up and pulverized by the senators. It's just so much fun watching this stuff, you know. And I got to ask again, why on earth? Now, she's a Treasury Secretary, and that's, you know, you go from Fed Chair to Secretary of the Treasury. That's, you know, she's obviously a very accomplished person. But, man, she's just not the best person to put on TV. And when she starts getting questions, she gets a little weird. So here's what, you know, the basic crux of her testimony today was to try to calm these senators down. And you know, these senator guys, that as much as they want to ask her questions, they want to get their political talking points in, right? But Yellen basically comes out and saying that, you know, the U.S. banking system, in spite of all this activity lately, is still sound. <sighs> Why can't you acknowledge and be truthful and say there's some issues in the system that we're addressing to make sure that the cracks don't get any bigger? Why can't you just be truthful and say that? You want to you look us in the eye and just tell us, hey, you know, I know it's raining on your head right now, but you got to believe me when I tell you that it isn't. I mean, it's just, that it just, it just, it, she sounds like an idiot to me. It's like, really, man, didn't we just have bank failure, hundreds of billions of dollars, right? Didn't we just have today, this very day, a bank bailout, a First Republic bank? And you don't... And you know there's more of that to come, okay? And here's the Treasury Secretary. Wants to try to tell us everything's great. This reminded me so much going back to the trans... First, it was inflation is not existent. This is the now transitory part of the banking collapse. Um, this is the best we got, guys. Really? I just wish that these guys, if they want to take the job, get paid the money, have the prestige and everything that goes with it, then you should be able to do that job and do it truthfully. The Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, 
as powerful a person as she is, works for us. Not for me, specifically. Not for you, specifically. But for all of us. And I just got to believe that we can do better than have somebody come up to us on the national stage and just blatantly look us in the face and try to lie to us. There's got to be better, man. And the rest of those knuckleheads up there in the Senate, you know, do you really care about your constituency? Because if you did, you would be working with her and getting into what are these problems and how can we help? Not looking to score political points, man. Is that all you guys got, really? Is that what's left in, of the U.S. government now? Just arrows flying back and forth and nothing for the good of the people? Remember when they used to say the business of government was taking care of the people's business? When are they going to start, man? Anyway, moving on. Short Sellers. I was reading this today. It was a fascinating article. Uh, it's a Reuters article if you want to look it up. Short Sellers making a, just a massive killing off of this bank freak out over the past week or so. $2.3 billion <laughs> from this bank collapse or bank stock route or whatever you want to call it. Um, hopefully they got out of those shorts because there was quite a rally in banks today, but wow. And you know, these guys are the ones that were, you know, you People freak out, right? They, they own a bank stock. They hear some news about the company. They look and they see the stock is just collapsing, cratering, and they think everybody that owns the stock is selling it. Not necessarily true. A lot of that could be short sellers who are borrowing the stock and selling it, hoping to buy it back at a lower price. And what happens is they put a lot of pressure on a company or even a sector like banks, and all the small shareholders, us, you know, the blue collar guys, the working guys, they free, see the market freaking out. They freak out and sell right into the hands of these freaking short seller guys. So just a, this is the world we live in now, guys, where people can make billions of dollars in that short, short length of time. A little good news today. Housing starts rally here in the U.S., up 1.1% after cratering 31.6% last month. Um, you know, housing is rough, guys, but at least it looks like we're finally starting to settle into a bottom. If rates weren't going crazy up and down, gyrating all over the place every day, if we could find a rate and keep it there for a little bit so buyers had a little bit of certainty about what their rate and their payment were going to be, maybe real estate could start to recover a little bit. Would be nice, government. Um, but anyway, so hopefully uh, these housing starts are kind of showing that we're kind of finding a little bit of a bottom here as far as construction goes. And hopefully uh, real estate's going to start to be on the mend. Okay, and news from yesterday, apologize for missing the show yesterday, had a big commitment, could not get out of, uh, but yesterday's big news was the PPI index, I wanted to bring this up, I really believe it's important news, um, PPI comes down to 4.6% in February from 5.7% in January, it's a pretty big drop guys, they were expecting 5.4%, huge difference man, wow, here's the good news on the PPI, this is the predictor of future prices right? Producers, they're first in line. They, they pay and buy and before consumers pay and buy, right? Um, so the producers now, their cost increase is coming down. They don't have to pass as much cost increase onto consumers. So it kind of foreshadows where the consumer price index is going to go in the very near future, right? So this is good news for consumers. I'm sick of paying prices, man. I'm sick of paying some of these prices. My wife laughs because I'm constantly shocked by what they want to charge for this, just the most basic stuff these days. So hopefully a little bit of good news on the inflation front. And before we close, just signs of, you know, crazy stuff I read that I like to share with you guys. In France, you know, they're having a massive, massive, massive protest across the country because the government is trying to change the retirement age, forcing a change on a, pop, a population that doesn't want this change, right? So in France, they're trying to raise the full retirement age 
from 62 to 64, okay? And that's enough for an eight-day general strike across the country and just ca catastrophe. They can't even vote on this in their, in their house, basically, in their assembly in France because they know it's going to get shot down. So they're just going to jam it through and force it on the people. And this is the way France behaves having to retire at 64. At the same time, here we are in the U.S. with there are geniuses in, in Washington now wanting to move the retirement age in the U.S. up to 70. It's already, for me, 66 years, 10 months. For most people, 67. Where is the protest here? Letters to the editor don't count. I hope Americans are going to, you know, this is a this is not some freebie here, guys. This is a benefit we paid real money for, okay? And uh, this was not something we had a choice in. And now they want to change the, you know, you faithfully pay your money, and they don't faithfully pay, they take it from you, your whole working career. And at the very end, it's like, well, you know, we know we said you could retire at 65, Chuck, but sorry. It's going to be 66 years, 10 months. Really? Now, trying to move it to 70 is just a slap in the face to every American who paid into the system. My opinion. Anyway, that's it for the day, guys. I know I'm a little long-winded. I apologize. We'll be back tomorrow. Wrap this crazy-ass week up. Till then, take care. Thanks.